The other day, um, I wanted to make a teacup for a design I was working on. And I like to buy graphic clip art from several different um, clip artists. Um, but I just didn't find one I wanted. I just wanted something super simple. I didn't want it to be the main focus of the um, work I was working on. I just wanted it to be uh, just something cute and simple. So I decided to make one. And I thought about how you can make so many different things from just shapes that are already in your Brilliance library. So I wanted to give you a peek at how I made this simple cup uh, to give you ideas of how to make other things as well. So what I did first is I went in and I grabbed a shape. I grabbed a circle from the library, went up to my library, found the basic shapes, and I grabbed a circle. Then I went up and I filled that circle in. And it is a closed shape you can see up here. And because it's a closed shape, we can use our add a break line to closed shapes. So I click up on that, and that's in the right hand side. And I took and I broke or added a break line just a little more than halfway in the circle. I hit enter. Now at this point, we might want to adjust this a little bit. Looks like I'm a little off. But you know it'd be really easy. Might make your teacup a little top heavy, but if we went right to this line here and use the line. Okay, now we have our break line, but we need to break it. So if you go up back to the top, right hand side, yeah, there's a button toward the end that says cut the object at the break line. So let's go ahead and do that. When we do that, you can see the fill is no longer in there. Even though in the properties panel, it does show. Um, I never worry much about that. I just go back to the section and I hit fill again. So here we have the top portion of our cup. This portion here, we're not going to need for the top portion of the cup. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to move it down. I'm going to grab the green square in the middle, move it down, and we're going to use it as the little stand that the cup is on. Um, kind of a little pedestal, but it's a little bit large. So let's make it smaller. That looks visually about good, I think. Give it a little fill. Now I'm going to take this little circle or this little node here. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit because we don't need all that inside of the cup line. So you can see it looks like I have good overlay. And if you want to see how much overlay you have, there's a little eye button up on the left hand side. Click on that and you can see the overlay. Maybe I don't need that much overlay. I can always add a little less. I can make this a little shorter. Um, I do want a little bit because with fill designs, you want a little extra that goes underneath the other portion of it. Because when it stitches, there's a whole lot of um, push and pull that goes on. And we want to make sure these are actually butted up and touching each other or slightly under. Let's go back and click that eyelid again. Um, to prevent there being a gap between the two pieces. Okay, so um, it, looks, it looks pretty good. And now I would play with this more if I was designing the same cup that I did over here. Um, you can see I, I played a little more with the size and the shape. And you can do that with these shapes. I want to encourage you to use the shapes you have and so you don't have to redo, remake everything that's already here. Here's another thing we're going to do is we're going to take this shape right here and I'm going to command C, command V, or control C and control V if you have a, um, a PC. I have a Mac, so I do the command. I'm going to bring it up here and I'm going to assign this one just a running stitch so I can see things a little better. Okay, I'm going to make this a little wider. We're going to use this to make our handle of the cup. So now that we have this the width I want to at least for viewing and for working with, I'm going to command C, command V, or control C and control V, and make another copy. Now you can see these two copies over here. With the second one, I'm going to hit the inflate button, but I'm going to deflate. I'm going to take this and 
deflate it to a negative 3. Okay. And hit OK. Now you can see we have two separate pieces here. If I was to fill these pieces, this would not give me the result I wanted. It would do this. Okay. So let's not fill these. Let's put a line back around them. And with these both highlighted, both clicked on, we're going to go up here and we're going to go to Create, Outline, and we're going to combine the holes. Now that is going to take our two items and it's going to make them one item. So now we are able to fill it. Okay, that's awesome. Now let's twist this around a little bit and bring it down a little bit. I think we should resize it. So hold the shift key so you don't get distortion. It will change the width and the height at the same time. Let's make it about like that. Let's put it a little closer here. Now you can tell it's not touching over here yet. So what we're going to want to do is we can make a little adjustments. Pull that over a little bit and there. Let's make it a little bigger. I hit the number two button, just the number two, and it brings it to two times the size, 200% zoom. Help me visualize it a little bit better. And then you want to play with this, and maybe this is a little too narrow, and make your little adjustments. Um, and let's go hit the one button. And this isn't perfect yet, but I just want to give you an idea how we're doing these combinations of shapes and sizes in order to make objects. I would also take this one and I would highlight on it, click it down, uh, the double click or um, right click, and then I would go down to move this first. I'd move the base first to bring it behind everything. Um, I would also then make sure that there's a great flow for stitching I could use the branching button on all three of these, but I found that sometimes it works great to branch them, little branch button, and sometimes I'm not happy with the artifact lines that end up happening with that. So many times I will just go in and I'll take and I'll move this end stitching here. So this is where the stitching will end. So then if I make the start, down here, it's a nice even flow. As soon as it ends, it starts here. And then we'll bring this end over here. And we can get rid of this artifact line by playing with the angle a little bit. We we'll just, we'll just play a little more until we got rid of it completely. Um, and then here's the start end here, so it will be a nice even flow. Now, when it came to the steam, I also thought, hmm, I could recreate and just make my own steam, or I wonder if I could find a shape that would work for that. So I went in and I looked at all the different shapes that there were, and I came across a snake. And I thought, huh, that looks a little bit like steam. So I grabbed that and brought it up here a little bit, decided that well, this end doesn't look so much like steam, so let's just get rid of the end and see what happens. Got rid of the end. And I thought that was a perfect steam look. Filled it. Let's give it a color that maybe looks a little more like steam. Okay. While we're at it, we're going to change this cup, too. I don't know why this orange is visually unattractive to me, but it is. Okay, so... And then I adjust it a little bit here, keep it a little flatter, just change it up just a little bit. And then I did my Command C, Command V, draw the second one up here, Command C, Command V. Remember it's Control C and Control V if you have a PC. I brought one down here, and I just visually I to line them up to make them look pleasant. So I took all three of them and I centered it over the middle of the coffee cup. Now, I did play a little more and tweak this a little better. Um, but there's a basic idea of how you can create different objects with just using your shape tools. 
and I hope that gives you some ideas and different things to do. Thanks for watching.